Hello, brothers and sisters, this is Lisa, and I'm here to share the latest word from William Brooks. The title is God is Love, and this word was posted April 30th, 2024. My children, understand your true nature, for yours is the very nature given of God in me, Christ Jesus, for God is love. Yet God's love is not the same as man's love, in the same way that God's ways are not man's ways either. But you do learn God's ways in me, for I am your teacher and shepherd. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in this action of God giving me, Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son for the sins of mankind. His love is expressed in perfect union in me. For I am of the Father, and of the same nature and same Spirit. For God is Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and truth. For I and my Father are one in Spirit, unity, and purpose. Understand that God's love is not the same as man's love, for man's love tends to be conditional, and fallen man tends to express his love in giving and receiving of favors, and man's love turns inward to benefit the man who loves, for so is the love of man. The love of God many times is expressed in giving freely for the benefit of another and to serve your fellow man without recompense at times, and to visit the widows, to heal the sick, to edify the body of Christ. So I ask you, my children, to learn of me, Christ Jesus, for he who has seen me has seen the Father. And though you have not yet seen me with your own eyes, but very soon you will. For blessed is he that has not seen and yet believes, and you have seen me in spirit and in truth, and you have seen me in my ways, and by the love I send and through the work my ministers perform for me, for your sakes. So you do know me, and you have seen me, and when you walk in the Spirit of Christ that is born within, you truly are walking in love. For so is my nature, that I have given to you, and so is my Father, who has given of his nature to me. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. And again from the first letter of John, herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. My little children, you are the children of the living God, even Yahweh, for in the same way Yahweh planted a garden eastward in Eden. He has planted the seeds of the spirit of sonship in your very being, for I am his gardener that tends to your soul. For you are recreated in me, and you are created in love, and the love of God is in your very nature, and understand that your full redemption is at the door, where you will know even as you are known. My bride, I have so much to explain to you and to teach you and to reveal to you about yourselves, and for what purposes you have been sanctified to accomplish. For it has been a mystery in the Father's heart since before creation, and soon you will understand. So who shall separate you from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, 
You are more than conquerors in me, Christ Jesus, and my love is being brought to full consummation in you, my bride. For the times are at hand, and soon you will know. My Father's love is unconquerable, for he is unconquerable. For God is love, and love is Yahweh's very nature. For God is love. One of Satan's many deceptions he employs to lead you astray is to portray love as weak, non-committed, self-serving, and futile. For these are the ways of natural man. Truly, Satan is in denial, for it is he that has been made futile, and my Father's love cannot be conquered, for there are none like him. In me was his love perfected in the flesh, for it was my love for my Father, and for you, my bride, that I gave myself a sinless ransom for you, are greatly loved, and know that you are the apple of Yahweh's eye, and you, my bride, are the apple of my eye, and in love did I ransom you from the hand of the enemy, perfectly, with nothing lacking, in my atoning blood. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. My children, since God so loves you, then you owe it to yourselves to accept his love and to accept his words regarding you and the mighty deliverance that the Father wrought in my sacrifice as your perfect Passover. So many of you misunderstand the finality of the creation that I have made you in, me, Christ Jesus, and in the spirit I have created within you. For that spirit is powerful, and it is love, for it is the Father's very nature, for Yahweh is love. Behold, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, and I did lay down my life for my friends, and in so doing I have made you my brothers, and I have made you sons of God. Behold, what love the Father hath given to us, that we should be called the sons of God. For this cause this world knows you not, because it knows not him. Hear my words that I gave John in his first epistle, and hear them well. Yahweh has granted the highest favor for you against the accuser and against those who condemn you, and he has made their accusations baseless against you, for you have been purchased in my sinless blood, and you are acquitted of all charges in my atoning work. Have you not read what I told the Romans these many jubilees long past? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Have you not heard the testimony of Hebrews, where their voice witnesses of my unchanging priesthood? Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. Hear these words, and let them sink into the very core of your being, and hear the voice I gave to the Roman church, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Are these words too wonderful for you? Will you allow yourselves to understand, or will you stop your ears in your worthless traditions and the worthless false testimonies you hold to, given by worthless false prophets designed to lead you astray? Is it too hard of a thing to accept that you have been made the righteousness of God in me, Christ Jesus? 
I need you to get really quiet in your mind and heart and let my voice calm your spirit and hear my words. Soften your hearts and demolish your pride, for I have something to tell you that will free you from bondage if you will but believe the specific words I am about to give you yet again. For the voice of the Romans speaks to you as you read, so read and understand, and in understanding, accept the truth of your standing in me, Christ Jesus, and my words are these. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Don't let your eyes glance at the words, but read each of them slowly and with faith. Faith in me, for I have spoken these words over you, my children, and I, Christ Jesus, have freed you from all condemnation in me. Do you not understand that you have been made the righteousness of God? Understand me and hear my voice, and give attention to my words. Who is he that condemns you? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. My children, I didn't call you to myself in righteousness and true holiness to condemn you. And you have to understand the truth. You have no right to condemn yourselves, and so many of you do. And your lives are tormented over this self-loathing that the enemy has put on you. Allow me to break these false chains of the enemy and hear my words and believe them for they are true, and they are written for you that you may be truly free in me, for I have released you from all condemnation, and the enemy and accuser of the brethren is cast down. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Understand, my children, that you are righteous, and to condemn yourselves is to disregard my words that the Father has given you. So do not be faithless, but have great trust in my words, for they are true, and no truer testimony has been given. Understand the difference in self-condemnation and my spirit working in you to convict you of sin for what did I tell John in his first letter. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God? Do you not understand? that my spirit that I have created within each of you, my bride, actually convicts you of your sins even after you are born again in me, Christ Jesus your Lord? Have you not read my testimony recorded in the good news of John regarding the Comforter? And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged. My children, the Comforter convicted you of sin, and you have turned to me, and in the new birth, and in the power of the Spirit, I have created within you even that spirit of sonship, even Christ in you, the hope of glory. I have made you the righteousness of God in me. Therefore you are no longer convicted of sin 
but you are convicted of righteousness when you sin, even when you turn to your old ways. For the serpent loves to lead my people astray and then bring accusation before my father and before me of his ungodly works, and I am your intercessor. For again, the witness of John in his first epistle speaks on the subject. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you not, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. My children, I am your advocate, and you are righteous in me, and you are righteous forevermore, for righteousness has been birthed in your very nature. So have a tender heart towards me, and I will show your sins and mistakes to you, even your bad habits and your previous evil ways that you are at times tempted to return. For when your heart convicts you, turn to me and confess your sins for what saith Scripture. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My children, I have judged you righteous in me, and Yahweh has acquitted you of all charges in me. Why will you not allow yourselves to believe my gracious and loving words? For God's love is expressed in them as well as my love for my bride and even the entire world. For whoever wills may come, only come before the door closes for time is up. Return to me on a daily basis and cleanse yourselves in my atoning blood. For my sacrifice is perfect and is once and for all. For the Hebrews clearly state concerning me, who being the brightness of the glory <clears throat> and the engraved form of his person and bearing up all things by his mighty word, hath by himself purged our sins and sits at the right hand of the majesty in the highest places. My children, Understand that the Comforter has also reproved the world of judgment, for the Prince of this world has been judged, and his sentence is deserved. But to this very minute he seeks to drag you down into his much-deserved condemnation, so he comes to condemn you. So hearken not to his words and repudiate his lies. My little ones, walk in the love of God in me, Christ Jesus, your Lord. Love the Father and love my by keeping the commandments. For what says First John? He that saith I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. I command you, my bride, to continue to walk as I walked and keep my commandments. For I, I, I always did the will of my Father, and so should you endeavor to always do my will, for mine is the will of Yahweh. In keeping my commandments, you will have to turn to the brethren, for what says First John, By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, 
that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Hear my voice and follow my words to the end of obedience, and continue to love your brethren and serve in love, not for base gain, for your reward is in my hands, not in the hands of those you serve. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. I am the righteousness of God, and I have made you the righteousness of God. I am he that is justified in his ways, for I am sinless, and I have justified you in me, Christ Jesus. I am he who that is always and forevermore sanctified, for mine is the kingdom of God, and I have sanctified you by the spirit of sonship. I am he who gave his last drop of blood on the cross, that I might cleanse you all sin. Cleanse you of all sin, for there is no sin in the spirit of sonship I have given you. Stand at the ready, my bride, for the times of restoration are at hand, and my appearing is nearer than you think. And that is the end of this message. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.